Hi, this is Ghost and welcome back. Today I've got you something a little bit different. There's a few little tips and tricks that I've sort of collated together from my time attempting to learn to fly and I thought I'd try and impart them on to you in a hope that it might help you get a little bit better and a little bit faster at learning to fly than I did. Right, starting out with the correct planes to use and the rest game, best game modes to play on. Now, obviously, there's three variations of planes. I'd honestly stay far clear from the bombers. They're very hard to fly. They're very... Uh, unresponsive they're very slow they are sitting targets you are a sitting duck in them most of the time also the amount of kills you can rack up i find you just can't get as many kills as you can with the other two variants um the fighter plane and the attack plane are the better two i think although there are three variants for each one of them the best variants i find for both of them are the ground support variant for the attack plane and the trench fighter version for the fighter plane i'm still very much learning to fly the fighter planes um i've spent most of my time just focusing on the attack planes i find them the easiest to find easiest to fly and the easiest to rack up the most kills with because both weapons can do damage with the fighter plane you're literally relying on the bombs entirely to get your kills unless you're fighting other planes obviously but i find i get a lot more kills with the attack plane i am at the moment still trying i'm trying to learn to get a bit better in the fighter planes as you'll notice in the clips towards the end of this video i did actually i do use the fighter plane every now and again and i do actually get an award for 20 kills on the fighter plane which might explain to you how much i use the fighter plane but it is something i am focusing on getting a little bit better with uh, next up the type of game mode that i'd suggest you playing is very much operation 64 man operations is really the best because everyone clumps up so much and you can get so many more kills because you can't really play the objective very much with the planes you very much got to focus on getting as many kills as possible to get an equivalent score to what you would if you're on the ground capping all the flags or defending the flags reviving your teammates resupplying etc etc um, and i find 64 man operations is the best for that as an added bonus to it there's not really as many other targets in the air for you to deal with and most of the time there's only other sort of one other plane at the, up at a time and if you deal with them you're then free to just wreak havoc on the ground and also depending on which sector you are if you're defending the attackers don't really have any anti-aircraft so they literally have to deal with you by trying to shoot you from the ground which isn't the most effective and obviously gives you their position very easily and you do a lot more damage to them than they do to you anyway next point uh target priority uh, this is very much a big thing just in battlefield in general like on the ground if you're shooting a group of people you always want to make sure you kill the medic because if you leave the medic up and you've got to reload by the time that you finish reloading the medics run around and pick everyone up again uh, this is very much the same with every aspect and in the planes the your first target is to think about is is other planes um the, the fighter planes will always do a lot of damage to you the attack planes you can always got to worry about as well the one that the one that changes this very much is the bombers if there's a lot of bombers up in the sky i tend to leave them if they're not doing very much they're, they're just taking up the slot of a plane that would be shooting you down and they can't really shoot you down you might every now and again get a really over eager tail gunner or take the old pot shot at you but they're very rarely going to focus heavily on trying to take you down um, just avoid them leave them let them do their own thing they tend to float around if however they start racking up the kills it might be time to shift priorities and go back to shooting them um, after you've dealt with the planes and decided what you're going to do with the planes your next priority is the aa now number one i always try and learn where all the aa is on each of the maps operations is a little bit easier because it's obviously limited because you're in certain sections of the map so you don't have to worry about operate uh, the aa right at the back of the map because no one's going to be in that area they're going to be focused around the objectives so you you once you've learned the aas you can kind of skirt around them and you can't win straight up fights with AAs. you've got to sort of sneak up on them come from an angle they're not expecting wait for them to engage someone else then go and kill them and after you've dealt with your uh, other pilots in the sky and the aas obviously you can then focus on your place where you're going to rack up the most kills which is the ground and although you don't do an acid amount of damage especially in the fighter plane you don't, I don't think you do any damage to armor targets in the attack plane you do do a little bit of damage to armor targets and it's always worth chucking a few shots in if you see a team attacking a tank just throw them lend them a hand chuck in some few rounds and every now and again you might get the kill and rack up even more points which is always good i think at some point in this i do actually destroy a heavy tank i think i may have stolen it from my teammate who was uh, shooting at the same time as me but i think it was probably quite helpful to them and i think in a full run on the attack plane you can do about 20 25 damage to it which is the equivalent of another anti-tank grenade which is always helpful which will take away their emergency repair so definitely worth doing it here it is right here all right next up is the mini map you'll notice my mini map is slightly larger than everyone else's i'd like to zoom my um, zoom i like to make my mini map a little bit bigger i have the zoom i have it to about 150 percent i think standard it's a lot smaller than that i don't find that area of the map uh, area of the screen is ever something i lose targets in 
so um, I don't mind it being a little bit larger. I also dropped the opacity a little bit so you can see the ground below you so it's not quite so, so, so obtrusive. On top of that, I also like to zoom the level of it out. Now, as you can see at the moment, whilst I'm flying over on uh, Giant Shadow, it zoomed out quite a lot and I can see the flags from a long way away. Now, with both these two variants that I've suggested, their gadget is the spotting flare, and you should always be dropping this. I'm not always great at doing this. Um, it's very much more, do as I say, not as I do. I don't always remember to do it, uh, but I should do it. Every time you come in for a strafe run, they're on cooldown, drop them. If you have the minimap zoomed out like that, you can then see where they all are. So next time you come in for a strafe run, you can go, oh, they're all around that rock, I'll aim for that rock, and you can get more ki you'll get more kills. Because unfortunately, although it's wonderful when it does happen, if your teammates spot everyone, it makes it so easy to kill people in the plane. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen overly often, and it makes it a bit more challenging. So you have to kind of rely on your own spotting techniques. Though, excuse me, though when people do actually spot targets, it makes it so much easier. Um, but yeah, um, I will say one thing about the minimap. As you can notice at the moment where I'm on uh, Monte Grappa on operations I am at the moment um, you can see the minimap zoomed in loads and occasionally on the Xbox for some reason it seems to glitch out and you can't change the zoom like you would be able to on the PC and it zooms into the level that you would have it as if you were a standard infantryman and that's just a, a little bit irritating because I don't need to see the top of this mountain it's not useful I can't see where I'm aiming and it becomes a rather pointless feature on the on the screen anyway uh, next point, dogfighting. Now there are two parts of dogfighting one is attacking and the other is defending if you're attacking Never follow too closely. You want to keep a good distance from them. Uh, this also is helpful in the fact that you won't lose them in a high-speed turn. But also, if they decide to do a technique, which I don't really agree with, but it is one that can work every now and again, which is swap into the tail gun and the attack plane to shoot you. If you're a good distance away, as soon as they do that, just disengage and come at them from a different angle. They can't stay in that tail gunner forever. They've got to swap back to the flight seat, although otherwise they'll crash. So just disengage and come back out of them again. Um, much but the best way of dealing with someone if they do that um, the best technique if you're using a tap plane uh, for well at least what I find is aiming for the tail if you can break the tail the rudder and the tail it completely compromises the handling of the plane you can't steer and you can't pitch up and down making them an absolute sitting target for you and you can destroy them much quicker I find that's the the easiest and quickest way of destroying them and I, I get most of my kills by doing that. If you're struggling with that, aim for the wings, clip the wings, and that obviously pulls them to a certain side. Next up, when you're defending against someone shooting at you, I find there are two really good ways of getting getting away from people. I say really good ways, they work sort of most of the time. One of them works about 50% of the time if someone's not 100% switched on. As I mentioned, there is one way that people do use, which is swapping to the tail seat and the attack plane. I don't like doing that because I find it makes you just a complete sitting target. You're so easy to hit then. You're just you're not moving you're moving very slowly and as i said if they start winning you just disengage and they've then got to swap back and you can come back in and come from a different angle and they've then got to try and do that again now the two techniques that i find the best for trying to evade targets is both of them start out with going around in a circle as fast as you can go around in a circle the first one is as you're going around in a circle increase your attitude corkscrew up now if anyone if you break line of sight on anyone then most people are only going to assume that you're carrying on round around around in a circle they haven't taken into consideration the height that you've gone off and this should break line of sight, enable you to go off and repair if you need to, or get on their tail and then do the same to them. The other option is, as you're going around in your fast circles, as you get to a, sort of the furthest point from where you started, just kill your speed completely. Just drop it off entirely. If they are too close to you, they will fly straight past you, enabling you to either break off and go and repair, or then get on their tail and kill them. Uh, those, those are the best two ways I've found. Occasionally, if you get a really good pilot on your tail, there's not an awful lot you've got, you can do. You just try and be as erratic as possible, and you may have to uh, accept your fate and bail out eventually. Uh, and finally, the most important key factor that I can give you for learning to fly in the planes is practice. Practice makes perfect. It's true with everything. Your aim is always going to get better when you practice more. Um, I find that a really good starting point if you haven't really ever flown before is to try and find an empty server. I think Sinai Desert is actually useful for something. I think it's an awful map. I don't like it at all. But for learning to fly on, it's quite useful. On an empty server, if you can jump on, get in the plane and just fly around the B flag as much as possible. Try and get your figure of eights and loop between all the cliffs. Go up and down underneath that sort of stone bridge that they've got as well. And just and just use that to try and learn the learn the controls and customize them to your feel. I like having them in inverted because just because I've got so used to flying over the years on all all games, it's always been inverted controls on flying, and it just feels weird to me to be normal. Um, so <laughs> that's something to keep in mind, and I'd I'd recommend just learning flying like that. 
but it is all literally about time. Bear in mind your Scorpion Minute will probably take a hit when you first start because you can't play the objective as much as you would normally and you won't be able to heal and revive people as much but you can get some good amount of points from spotting flares and damaging things so and only time will tell and the, the better you get with it the more kills you're going to be able to rack up and your Scorpion Minute's going to go back up again. As another bonus to this your KD might go up <laughs> but anyways I hope you found this useful. I hope you learned something from it. Um, um, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this from me, please leave a comment and a like below. It'd be hugely appreciated. Let me know what you think of this video. I've also added in, for the first time ever, a thumbnail, which I haven't really tried doing before, so let me know what you think of that. Um, and I've, I've tried to improve my production quality a little bit, so um, I'll keep trialing new things. I've got some other series that are coming up. But anyway, guys, I will leave you with me destroying this behemoth in the fighter plane. I'm pretty positive this is definitely what you call stealing it because I put about three shots into it to destroy it. <laughs> but it was quite cool to get it. Always worth doing. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye for now.